The Russian Civil War was not only a conflict between the Reds and the Whites. There were many other factions involved. And in this video, we're going to look at the Black Army, the anarchists of Nestor Makhno. He established a so-called free territory in southeastern Ukraine, but they had many enemies to deal with. This video will be about the revolutionary insurgent army of Ukraine during the Russian Civil War. Keep watching. Good to have you back on the channel. If you're new to this channel, I'm Stefan, I'm a Dutch history teacher and I like to cover history for you. And if you find it interesting, well, consider subscribing and also hit that notification bell. In the previous video, I discussed how Nestor Magno's ideas regarding anarchism developed and how he managed to set up an anarchist territory within the former Russian Empire. In this video, we're going to take a look at his armed forces, also known as the Revolutionary Insurgent Army of Ukraine. When the February Revolution in 1917 had caused the Russian Tsar Nicholas II to step down, many political prisoners were released, and one of these was Nestor Makhno. This 27-year-old anarchist went to his hometown in Goulier Polier, where he rejoined the Goulier Polier Libertarian Communist Group. Makhno was elected as chairman. He advocated that the estates of the landowners had to be handed to the peasant communes without payment or compensation. In the whole region, communes came into existence. From far and wide, people traveled to Goulia Polier to meet Magno in person. Magno's followers, who numbered in the tens of thousands of followers by now, they disarmed local police and they set up their own militia. The area of the anarchists was named the Free Territory which was also known as the Magnovshina. The Magnovshina has denied all statism and inspired to the building of a free society on the basis of the social independence, solidarity and self-direction of the toilers. In October 1917, the Bolsheviks seized powers and by March, they signed the Treaty of Brest-Litovsk with the Central powers. Soviet Russia had to cede large swaths of land to the central powers, among which the whole of Ukraine. And so the free territory was now in the territory of the central powers, who established the so-called Hetmanate of Ukraine, uh, which was Pavlo Skoropatsky, which basically was a puppet ruler for the central powers. And it was by this time that Makhno set up his army to fight the imperialist occupiers. Sometimes called the Black Army, they fought under the Black Anarchist flag and at other times referred to as Magnovists. Magnovshina, Magno's men originally took up arms against both Pavlo Skoropatsky and his German and Austrian allies, as well as Simon Petliura and his Ukrainian nationalist forces. They did have broader goals sympathizing neither with the Whites nor with the Ukrainian Central Rada, Makhno's anarchists allied themselves initially with the Bolsheviks. His forces helped the Bolsheviks establish the first brief Bolshevik Ukrainian government in early 1918. Makhno quickly demonstrated his exceptional abilities as an organizer and a convincer to bring different factions together and form a considerable force. His daring courage and cunning strategy soon earned him legendary status. Meanwhile, the cycle of revenge and oppression continued to escalate, resulted in targeted killings of officers of Germany, Austria or Ukraine, while soldiers who had committed no crimes were disarmed and released. Nestor Magno was one of the most extraordinary leaders of the Civil War. Even though he was very short and looked young for his age, he was known by his men and the peasants of southeastern Ukraine as Batko or father. Some saw him as the anarchist Ataman, others as a mounted gangster, and many as a Robin Hood of the steppe. On the 11th of November 1918, armistice was signed, which ended the First World War. The fighting on the Eastern Front between the Central Powers and Soviet Russia had ended by some time now, but what the armistice did was it annulled the terms that were set in the Treaty of Brest-Litovsk. In other words, the Germans, they had to evacuate Ukraine. Also, Pavlo Skaropatsky's regime came to an end as he traveled with the Germans 
to safety. Ukrainian nationalists that were led by Simon Petliura, they established Ukrainian nationalist government. In November, Makhno's forces took the city of Ekaterinoslav, which is later known as Dnepropetrovsk and now known as Dnipro, from Ukrainian nationalist forces. He did this by sending soldiers disguised as workers via railway carriage to the central railway station of the city. They quickly seized the city center, but after a few days, they pulled back and they left as they came in by train. Makhno's forces often made use of the railways. Their relation with the Reds changed from time to time. At some point, the Reds made an effort to capture Makhno, but often Red forces were ambushed by the Blacks. Makhno's wife, Galina Kuzmenko, wrote about such an ambush. Red Army soldiers did not protest very much. They surrendered their weapons quickly while their commanders fought to the end, until they were killed on the spot. By the morning, almost three quarters of the 6th Regiment were disarmed. Part of the regiment engaged bravely in a firefight with us, but when they learned that their comrades had already been disarmed, they surrendered their weapons on their own initiative. Our lads were very cold and tired, but every one of them was rewarded by the realization that even a small group of people with weak bodies but strong spirit, inspired by one great idea, can achieve great deeds. In several hours, 70 to 75 of our lads had captured over 450, 500 of the enemy, killed almost all of their commanders, and taken a lot of rifles, cartridges, machine guns, carts, and horses. Now, not only the Reds were fighting against the Blacks, because the Blacks also fought against the white forces in the Donbass. These in the Donbass were led by General Vladimir Maimeyevsky. It is said that Maimeyevsky was more afraid of Makhno than he was afraid of the Red Army, because Makhno's forces always arrived when they were the least expected. What seemed to have happened is that a battalion of conscripted white forces was sent to Ekaterinoslav and defected to Makhno. Due to the total lack of communication on the side of the whites, Makhno's men managed to take the city again mid-October 1919. Makhno's forces struck all over eastern Ukraine. According to Red Army Intelligence, he had 28,000 infantry and cavalry with 50 field guns and 200 machine guns. His forces also took Berdyansk and Mariupol on the north coast of the Sea of Azov. And as the Whites were marching on Moscow, their supply lines became overstretched and came under attack by the Blacks. And it is said that due to the efforts of the Blacks, the Whites never made it to Moscow. In early 1920, the Red Army returned to Ukraine after defeating the White Movement. They attacked the Magnovshina which occupied most of southern Ukraine in an attempt to pacify the region. The Red Army attacked the Magnovshina again in November 1920 after a brief truce to ensure the final defeat of the White Movement. This led to a resumption of hostilities. The conflict primarily involved guerrilla warfare with no conventional maneuvers or open battles. Territory regularly changed hands between the two sides, making it highly mobile. The Bolsheviks maintained territorial control and the Makhnovists were on the defensive. They were not able to carry out offensives, and if they attacked, they mostly attacked isolated red units. The Revolutionary Insurrectionary Army of Ukraine was a powerful force that was feared by many. Its black anarchist flags were a distinctive feature. The army was incredibly fast and often referred to as a flying army, the cavalry unit was particularly adept at moving quickly across the country using their Parthian weapon to ward off many pursuers after a raid. To achieve this, they utilized a dusky open carriage called the Tashanka, which was pulled by a team of three horses and a heavy machine gun mounted on the back. The Tashanka was used much like an ancient chariot with a driver, rifleman, and machine gunner. Magno's soldiers were dressed in a mixture of military and civilian clothing, although in true anarchist tradition, uniformity was avoided. Magno himself preferred a fur papapka hat, red caliph breeches, and soft leather cavalry boots. He liked to carry as many weapons as possible, especially a decorative shashka sword 
and the German K96 Mauser in its wooden broom handle holster. Without delay, the Red Army betrayed their temporary ally, the Magnavis Insurgent Army, and demanded that they give up their weapons and integrate into the Red Fourth Army, Simeon Karachnik, who led their detachment during the invasion of Crimea, was called to Frunze's headquarters, but was apprehended along by his team of Red Army soldiers near Melitopol and put to death. The remaining members of the insurgent army were targeted by both Bujani's 1st Cavalry Army and the 2nd Cavalry Army. By the summer of 1921, Magno, his wife and a dozen of followers were left. They made their way to Romania, as one recalled. Our group reached the Romanian border and we swam our horses across the river Dniester in the area of Kamenka. During the last five to six days, we had ridden only at night avoiding clashes with the Reds, and we crossed the frontier on the 28th of August 1921. Magno and his wife would settle in Paris. Magno took on different jobs to earn enough income. A heavy drinker, he would succumb to tuberculosis in 1934. I read that his wife and daughter were deported during the Second World War to Germany to perform slave labor, then fell on the hands of the Red Army and were put to hard labor as well. And eventually, after Stalin's death, they were reunited. If you have not seen my previous video about Nestor Magno and his movement, you click right here. And if you wanna have an overview of the Russian Civil War, click right here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later.